Ms. Watkins, uh, th Watson, Watson, thank you very much for being with us. Um, how very likely much. is it that there will be that, that there will be a second wave of this virus in the U.S.? How likely? Um, I think we just don't know, unfortunately, with this virus. It, it makes sense with past pandemics that we have seen multiple waves. And it would make sense that we should be concerned in the fall because not only will we be experiencing coronavirus, but also uh, cold and flu season. So we need to be able to distinguish cold and flu uh, from coronavirus. So it's important to know that we're not out of the woods yet and then also be vigilant for the second wave in the fall. How will a second wave manifest itself? How will we know that one is upon us? What, how, what's, what form is it likely to take? Yeah, it's some of the indicators that you were just discussing by the states. So it's uh, increases in positive cases, increases in hospitalizations and ICU um, beds. Uh, it will look like uh, increases in percentage of positive uh, tests. So overall tests um, will go up, but then also the positive tests will also go up. So there are a number of indicators we can watch for, but public health can also look for this, uh, find it case by case basis and, and follow this and try to get indications more on the ground level before something starts to get going. Your Hopkins dashboard is now famous where you track the daily uh, uh, rise or fall in cases. As we looked at some of those numbers where case counts seem to be going up in states that have begun some tentative and in some cases more aggressive reopening, how do you separate the cases that may be related to the reopening from the fact that in many of those states there's just more testing so you would expect to find more cases? How do you tease them apart? Yeah, so we look for that indicator of percent positive tests. So if you have a low percent positive test uh, rate, which the WHO is recommending below 10%, um, then you know that you're testing enough to find those cases that, um, to find as many cases as possible, and that you're not just testing the sickest of the sick to find uh, those cases, because that's when your positivity rate goes up. Let's talk about the, the, the possibility of a vaccine, which everybody is very excited about. We're very hopeful about that. that. This is a fearsome disease when it strikes in many cases. Uh, but there are a lot of people out there who are afraid of vaccination to begin with and maybe even more sort of hesitant to take a vaccine that has been rushed to market. What's the risk of that? And how do you sell to the American public or the global public a vaccine that has been fast-tracked the way these seem to be? Yeah, it has been fast-tracked in some ways, um, but there are other w ways in which we're taking all of the normal precautions that you would take. So in particular, looking at these uh, clinical trials. So we're still going through phase one, phase two, and phase three clinical trials. And because we have such widespread disease, it's possible to do trials on a large scale. So that should give us some comfort that we're, we will see if, if a vaccine has some safety signals because we'll be testing it in larger populations. What is your sense of the likelihood of a vaccine being sort of generally available by the end of the year? And what is your sense of the probability, if at all, that there will be more than one vaccine that is effective? Yeah, I think the, the likelihood that we'll have a vaccine that is available and available on the, in the numbers that we need is probably pretty unlikely. Um, I hope that we see multiple vaccines that will start to become available. Um, I think we're going to start to see more data out of different vaccine trials. Uh, but I, I don't think that we're going to have the millions and billions of doses that we need from vaccine mm -hmm. by the end of the year. What is the probability? Is it negligible in your view or something above that, that this virus defeats the vaccine hunters? In other words, HIV has no vaccine. Uh, the common cold, which is a kind of coronavirus, has no vaccine. Yeah, I, I think we're seeing early indications from the vaccine studies that we, we think that we will find a, an effective vaccine. Um, we can't be sure, but I, I think it's a high likelihood that we will eventually have a vaccine against this coronavirus.